All right, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to go through uh, a review of Stephen's blood work. Um, I originally recorded this video for my Facebook group, Advanced Fundamental Health. Uh, I'm re-recording this one now so that we can upload it to YouTube. Uh, so this is going to be like a inception video within a video. So yeah, let's uh, let's just get into it. So what are my blood results on my typical transcortal testosterone cream TRT? Before we start, for all those interested in my lifting, I just uploaded in our merchandise store my total beginner's complete body workout and my two-day split upper lower body workout. Good morning. So I just wanted to share with you my most recent blood results from September the 1st on my typical TRT. So you probably by now all know that I'm using testosterone cream 20% compounded transcortally twice a day. So for those who aren't aware, particularly for those who are in Australia or uh, outside of the US, this is called a toppy click dispenser. Um, and if you are going to use a 20% cream, this is by far a better option to use in the pump packs uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that if you were using a pump pack and you don't pump out a full dose, it's going to cause air to go back into the mechanism. And this is going to mess up basically the rest of the bottle and then the accuracy of future doses. But the other advantage of this outside of ease of use is that you can actually program it to be 0.25 of a mil instead of 0.5 of a mil, which allows for more dose customization to be used. So in this video and in a lot of circumstances, when people are talking about dosing cream, they talk about clicks. A click is generally, unless stated otherwise, uh, 0.25 of a mil. Uh, and this is because the dispenser is programmed to basically click out a little portion of cream. So this is 200 milligrams per mil. So one click is a quarter of that, which is 50 milligrams per click. So I use three clicks. That's 150 milligrams in the morning, a.m., 7 a.m., and 7 p.m. in the evening, same thing, 150 milligrams, three clicks with the topic click dispenser. So I will just read off these results before I mention what my total testosterone and free testosterone is. Hematocrit 50%, iron 138 micrograms per 100 milliliters, ferritin 107 micrograms per liter, vitamin B12 970 nanograms per liter, bit at the high side, but that's maybe the, all the supplementation I'm taking, cholesterol 154 milligrams per 100 milliliter, HDL 45, LDL 96, triglycerides 63, vitamin D 89.2 nanograms per milliliter. To be optimal for this laboratory reference range, it's between 40 and 100. Um, so just you know, I am taking um, two tablets of 4,000 international units vitamin D in the morning. Then prolactin 11.05 micrograms per liter, Eustradiol, E2, 64 nanograms per liter. Progesterone, 0.5 micrograms per liter. And DHEA, sulfate, 211 micrograms per 100 milliliter. So you might say, oh, the Eustradiol, the E2, is a bit at the high side. Yes, maybe so. But I don't have any symptom of that. No water retention, no uh, nipple sense. Just go back to those lab works. So... Hematocrit 50%, generally on TRT, your hematocrit level is more of an indicator of your hydration unless you're using a very high dose. So this means that Stephen's well hydrated. Uh, his iron is 138, which is perfect. Ferritin 107, generally ferritin will drop on TRT. Uh, however, this hasn't dropped too much. So this is suggesting that he's having a good intake of iron in his diet. B12 is elevated a fraction beyond the reference range. Basically, if you are taking a B complex or a bioavailable form of B12, uh, assuming that you're also getting some B12 in your diet, you are going to be beyond the reference range. Many people go into the thousands. Totally fine, assuming that you're taking a B12 supplement. Uh, cholesterol is all very good as well. The main thing that I personally look at with uh, cholesterol is your triglycerides as a measure of inflammation in conjunction with your C-reactive protein. Uh, and this is also very low, which is very good. But even for those who are, you know, who do obsess over the HDL and LDL, uh, these are very healthy numbers as well. Uh, 
25 hydroxy vitamin D. This is the form of vitamin D that you want to check if you're going to get lab work done for vitamin D. Um, I like vitamin D to be around 100. So 89.2 is totally fine. A little bit north of that would be fine as well. I've done a lecture on this channel, which goes into that a bit further. But you want to measure 25 hydroxy vitamin D uh, if possible, as this is a more accurate measure of your vitamin D status. Uh, his prolactin is nice and low, uh, which is, I, I believe, is an indicator of stress in men. Uh, his estradiol is at 64, which is exactly double the top of this reference range. However, it is, as we know, about the testosterone to estrogen ratio. So, for example, if he had this level of estrogen and had very low testosterone, that would signify that he's got a problem going on. However, with elevated testosterone levels, we would expect to see an elevated estradiol level. Uh, and as Stephen said, I did cut him off a little bit, uh, but he doesn't have any symptoms of uh, elevated estrogen. So this is obviously fine. Uh, and his progesterone and DHEA are very good as well. Uh, progesterone is not deficient and DHEA is smack bang in the middle of the range. I do know that Stephen, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to get this dose right, but I believe he's taking 50 milligrams of DHEA and 100 milligrams of pregnenolone. Uh, so that is showing that he is responding very well to those doses and they're not taking him too high. Uh, and he's feeling good on these doses as well, which is great. But I don't have any symptom of that. No water retention, no uh, nipple sensitivity. I've never had any issues with high E2. So why is this E2 so high? Probably because my testosterone is rather high on this dose. So let's have a look at the testosterone and albumin and calculated free testosterone. Well, here it is. So with my dose of daily 20% transcrotal testosterone cream, I get a total testosterone value from the laboratory of 1519.6 nanograms per deciliter. With an SHBG of 12.9 and an albumin of 43.9. Okay, so this is a really good example of how to do blood work when you're using cream. Because a lot of people, when they're using cream, they don't get instructed specifically on when to do the blood work. And we know that when you do your blood work is important on injections, but it's actually more important on cream because the cream has a shorter half-life. So you need to be a bit more precise. So when my guys use cream, I get them to get blood work done at a window between about four and six hours. And this measures the peak of the cream in the body. So we can see where it's spiking. Now, if we are troubleshooting, I'll also get the guys to measure at 12 hours, which will measure trough. Some practitioners just measure trough as well. That's totally fine. It's just not how I do things. So when we're measuring peak, this is basically where I'd want to see a testosterone level peaking, assuming that you were applying it twice a day. So we're peaking with a testosterone level of 1500, which is right at the top of where uh, the reference range used to go, as Stephen's going to talk about in a sec. And we've got a free testosterone of about 50. So we'll just call this 1500. We'll call this 50. For those watching in Australia, um, or for those who use different units of reference, if we're going to round down, you can actually just flip those numbers around to get what their equivalents are for total and free. So this would be equivalent to roughly a total testosterone of about 52, 53, uh, and a free testosterone of just over 1500 as well, um, just depending on which reference range and units you are using. So this is a very healthy level because what we are doing here is we're measuring the peak. So we can see this is the highest that Stephen is getting over the day. And he'd be getting this high again, you know, uh, later at night after he applies his evening dose. So what we can see is that although levels are going to be relatively stable because he's applying twice a day, we are going to get a little bit of like a wavelength going on of up and down. And we can see that he's not peaking, you know, too high in his levels. He's not getting symptoms of peaking too high. And then we also know that as a result, he's not going to be falling below a therapeutic range because we're measuring this. Stephen got this done at five hours um, and he would be applying his dose again uh, about six or so hours later. So it wouldn't have even fallen that much before he's applying another dose. So this is a great way to measure your blood work if you're going to be using cream. Now, in terms of the dose that Stephen's using, Stephen's using three clicks. He's using 150 in the morning and 150 at night. And in terms of an equivalent to injections, there isn't one. Um, there is no direct translation to go, okay, well, let's say if Stephen said, okay, I want to start using injections, what would give me the equiv equivocal amount of testosterone? The answer is we don't know because everyone responds very differently to one or the other, particularly with cream, there can be a lot of variance also with how the cream is made, uh, where the cream is applied, the actual uh, method you use to apply it, whether you let it dry properly and so on. 
But what I find for my guys who are swapping back and forth, generally it's the guys swapping from injections to cream, is the amount of cream that you're using daily is about equivalent to the amount of injections that you're using weekly as a start point. Um, that just kind of puts you in the ballpark. However, people respond differently. And when we're looking at Stevens, I would be saying that Steven is actually responding a little bit lower than what we would typically see. So I tend, when I'm using cream for guys, I tend to start them on one to two clicks, one to two times per day, depending on if they're starting treatment, their SHBG levels and what they've used in terms of injections. But generally the, the highest that I tend to go just from what I've seen is two clicks twice a day. Now I've gone as high as four clicks twice a day with, with some guys, but generally the average is about two clicks twice a day to get levels like this. And now I know which pharmacy Stevens cream is coming from, and this is an extremely good uh, version of testosterone cream. So what it means is that Steven is absorbing it a little bit less, or it is a little bit less effective in Steven's body than it is for the average person. Similar to how some guys can use, you know, 150 milligrams per week and get this testosterone level when they get their blood work done, whereas other guys need to use 200 or 250 a week to get this level when they get their blood work done, even if they were doing the same injection frequency. So it just goes to show how we're all a little bit different. And as Gil has said in one of his videos, the point of measuring your dose is to apply consistency. So three clicks a day, three clicks twice a day for Stephen would have a completely different result to me using three quick clicks twice a day and potentially for you watching this as well. So that's just important to note. Yes, the dose is a little bit higher than what might be typical, what might be average. However, the numbers are more in line with what the average person would get on maybe even half or three quarters of this dose. So in this free uh, testosterone calculator, a free free testosterone calculator, I get a free testosterone of 53.6 nanograms per deciliter. So you might find this rather high, but let me remind you that reference ranges from past generations were up to 1500 nanograms per deciliter as well. So, um, and the reference ranges are dropping quite considerably as well. Um, in Australia, the reference range for free testosterone in 2016 was 300 to 800. Uh, you can Google this and find this. Uh, as of last year, it was 200 to 700. At the moment, as of this year, it's now 150 to 600. So it's dropping even quite quickly now. So if someone comes in now and pulls a, you know, a free testosterone of, let's say, bang on 300, that would almost put them in kind of like, you know, lower quartile, lower third, you know, good looking levels according to the range. However, if they'd pull that same result five years ago, they would have been the very floor of the range or out of it. So it goes to show that the reference range is not important for dictating what your optimal dose is. It's symptom resolution, which is important and taking your levels to a healthy testosterone level for a man, which is not reflected in the reference range for the average labs. It's also about symptom resolution because I can assure you, I tried um, in 2017 when I started my TRT uh, testosterone cream, I tried twice a day, two clicks, 100 milligrams, uh, and even um, morning two clicks, evening three clicks. Um, and I only got symptom resolution. So I feel completely normal and fine at this dose. So probably I just need these uh, ranges and levels of testosterone in my blood. And some people need their levels to be a bit higher. Some people need theirs to be a bit lower. There would be some people that wouldn't feel good at this dose and would need it to be a bit lower. And there are other guys, including myself, that like Stephen, I only get symptom resolution when I hit those top levels. Why that is, it's to do with androgen receptor availability. It's to do with uh, neurotransmitters. It's to do with a whole bunch of different things that we can't see on your blood work. So we need to go by symptoms and how you respond. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them under this video in the comments. I will try to answer each and every one of them. So thank you. Give it a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Cool. So thank you, for Stephen, for sharing this. I think it's important that, you know, we're, we're getting blood work that we can look at so that people can get an understanding of how this process works um, and they can apply it to their own experience as well. So hope you guys find that helpful and I will see you guys on the next one.